welcome back to another GT scale modeling video. So today I'm going to just uh, give you a brief update on my entry into the Pricks of Plastic Russian buddy build, group build thing that's going on. Um, if you've seen either of my previous two videos on this you'll know that I'm building the Trumpeter 2S7 uh, self propelled gun. It's uh, obviously a Russian. Uh, 200 female self propelled howitzer. Uh, last time I think I had kind of finished building the upper hull, lower hull, uh, wheels and things and had started on the on the gun. Now the gun assembly in this kit is quite an involved build, I think it takes out most of the instruction manual and took quite a while to get completed. However, that is all done, all major sub-assemblies are finished, and there's even a bit of paint on the the outside of the kit. So, I'll just uh, kind of briefly sort of run you through some of the things that I've finished since then. Um, I think the gun, this, this section of the gun was, was done last time if I remember rightly, however I have since now glued in the, the initial stages of the, the barrel, including the short section from the RV models uh, metal barrel. Not really much to say about it, it's nice, it's one of these things that the, the breech is in theory movable. This little bit here is actually a ram with a movable inside bit, except where it mounts is not articulated, which means that you have to glue the end so you can't actually articulate it. You could pose the breech open if you wished, but I decided to pose it closed. So that's that. Uh, next we have the quite involved sort of gun mount I guess. Um, I've left the two sides off just now because I can get the gun in because otherwise I'll not get this area painted very well. There are still recoil, uh, the actual gun, main gun elevation cylinders still need to be made because again they're movable and things so I just decided to leave them off for now. I still actually do need to make those. Uh, this little bit here, hopefully you can see this. I've got a new camera angle today so hopefully this will work. Um, probably look at this later on and find out if things out of focus because I can't actually see the screen very well. Um, I believe this is actually the uh, one half of the hydraulic ram that will that allows the gun to have a very slight traverse. Um, on the other side is oh, that's, uh, that's that moves as well. Is one part of the gunner station, so how we believe we have some of the initial sighting. Uh, ranging, gun elevation, gun traverse, I assume these are the two controls for that. Um, I do apologise if you can see something occasionally squirming around down here somewhere. My kitten is on, on my lap just now. Um, so, do excuse me. Uh, what we have here is the autoloader arm. Um, this mounts into this side here, like so, and hangs around the back of the rear. The breech of the gun would be here. Um, there is actually another part that connects the bottom of here to this. Actually, sorry, no, that's what that's for. Remember now. Uh, but again, because I want to paint this separately, I can't put the bottom part on because that will lock it in place. So, um, again, there's a few parts which will get painted uh, later on. Even if it's once it's base coated, I mean, if I can get at least get a primer coat on it and and things, uh, it means that if I can't quite reach some places with a green spray, uh, when I come to do the main base colour, it's not really the end of the world because at least it's not bare plastic. Um, one of the other sub-assemblies is this, which is the, um, the sort of rear of the gunner's station. Uh, so there's a control box on here and uh, um, a seat, so this actually attaches this will eventually attach in here, um, but again, it would just be easier to paint that separately. The kitten's disappeared under the table. Um, and the other sort of last major sub-assembly then is the 
the rear recoil spade. Um, so these actually do well they did. Oh, there we go. So the hydraulic rams move in and out and they have little locking things which means that when it's in place I will be able to pull it either up or down or or such. So that's quite nice. So that's the main sub assemblies. Um, after that work started on the tracks. Now I hate trumpeter single link tracks uh, because they always come molded on. Mm. So they always come molded on these sprues with uh, four, at least well in this case there's four attachment points per link which have to be cleaned up, which is just a pain in the ass. Um, these ones also have separate guide horns. Oddly, the easiest bit of them. Um, this time I didn't actually have too much trouble, believe it or not. I was quite pleased. Now, whether that's just my own experience being improved from having done it a couple of times now on various kits or, or what, I don't know. But either way, uh, I cleaned them up and it didn't seem to be as much of a chore to clean them up as it has done in the past. And uh, I did the flat runs, you get a little jig. Oops. So I don't know if you'll see these ones here. These are just the last little, these are the last little run to make up the second set. So you just pop the links into the into the jig, and I think that's all of them. Oh, no, there's some here. So the links go into the jig, like so. Um, and in this case, we can just take some. To me, extra thin. Sorry, my hands are probably in the way. And uh, just on the edges where the links go together, you just run the glue down. I've never built a set of Dragon Magic tracks, but I assume this is. <coughs> excuse me. I assume it's a similar kind of way that they work. So once you've uh, once you've got the sides done, you uh, you could just let them to let them to set for a little bit. <coughs> uh, cut out um, some more of the guide horns, and then because uh, I want to retain, I use the Revell contactor just to to dot down the middle. Uh, it's got a bit more control over it. This tends to leak everywhere, so. Uh, so they all set up and uh, while they're still, this section here is actually going to need to have a straight section and then a curve around the idler wheel. Um, so uh, I want to, to kind of get that bit on while, the, while they're attached but still flexible. And this is what a, a run for this kit looks like. Um, hopefully we can see this still. So we've got the front, the back. Um, and that's because the I'll turn this up the right way. And hopefully, don't lose everything. So the <coughs> the rear idler is adjustable on this uh, vehicle. So either it's either up here under the skirt, kind of in level with the sprocket for transport, or I assume it's either to give a a more stable platform, potentially lower the centre of gravity slightly or whatever for firing, they can lower it and um, it gives the, the track run at the back this kind of different shape here. And I just thought that looked quite cool. So I've, I've glued my idlers in this uh, sort of deployed position, if you like. Um, the, wheels are, uh, the wheels are all here and have all been primed. And this upper hull is all now Ready. Um, I glued on and oh, I primed and then glued on the uh, front cab area, and the upper hull is also glued in place now as well. Um, I spilled some glue down the front, so I've had to sand that back. But this will all then get primed again. This was just so I could make sure that all the bits down the back were primed prior to gluing this in place. So, <coughs> in terms of building, all that's left is this is the upper run for the other side. Um, this is just the last section. Um, which I will shortly after this video wrap around, wrap around the end. It's just this last bit here. 
And <clears throat> at that point, um, I'm ready to, uh, I'll have a double check through the instructions. I haven't missed anything. As I said, I do actually still have the elevation, main sort of elevation cylinders to, to construct. So I will have a look at how they go on and whether they can made, be made up to be primed at the same time and then just attached later on or, or what, I don't know. So I'll keep that as 10 minutes now, so I'll just keep that short as a, a brief update as to the progress. Hopefully the next time I'll uh, have some progress where it's actually got some paint on it um, and some colour. I got three, three new paints through the other day which I've never tried before. Um, I don't like MIG paints, I've never had much luck with them. I do have a modern Russian set, but... <sighs> can't get them to, I don't know, they didn't work very well when I used them last time, so um, I found some paints from, oops, these are actually, these are Meng paints, I think there's a bit of a, a gimmick, and I didn't get them because they are Meng, they are actually AK Interactive paints, but they are several sort of modern Russian tones, I'm not overly convinced how, it looks rather green for Russian green. Um, I do have one, I think, I know that's, that's the B, yes, where's the Russian one, green khaki, I think green khaki, B, yes, I never had number. Anyway, somewhere there is a Russian green in my small mid collection, and uh, it could be this one actually. Uh, it could be this one, and I don't know if you'll see this, but yeah, there's there's quite a difference, so anyway, we'll see how they go, we'll give it a go. Um, I have seen some references where a 207 actually looks almost this kind of colour, which is apparently light olive, but um, so maybe what I'll do is go for a, they're quite old these vehicles now, so go for some of these colours as a base and use that to highlight up to, so it gives it a... Uh, it's kind of a, it should give it quite a good faded look actually so it actually should be quite good so we'll uh, call that there thanks for watching uh, I hope you uh, leave a comment down below and um, thank you again to all my new subscribers thank you for, for subscribing and coming along and I hope you are enjoying watching some of my videos if you're looking back at previous ones and I hope you enjoy ones to come and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video when hopefully this will have some paint on it. And uh, so yeah, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.